How many of us believe that? Together we can change the story. There are multitudes and masses outside of that door right there that need to hear what we're doing in here. Can we believe that this morning? I don't say that's because of me by any stretch. I'm honored and humbled to do what I do, but I'm a very, very small part of the puzzle. It's us as a unit. It's us as a whole that we believe in what we have. We believe in what we do. Let's tell somebody. That, that's, a, that's really going to be our, our, our goal for this year, the remainder of this year. So let's tell somebody. You know, back in the day, uh, of course, you know, I, I don't hide my uh, uh, um, association and, and affection for old time professional wrestling. I was involved in that for most of my life and in and around that. Back in the day, they used to have the local promotions and they would have the wrestlers come out and they would just turn the camera on. This was long before scripts and what have you. And, and they would just say, hey, you've got 30 seconds to tell the next town what's going to happen. You know, and there was an old guy, several different ones would say it, but there was an old guy that really started. His name was Thunderbolt Patterson. Maybe some of you have heard that name, but uh, Cla Claude Patterson's a great guy. I love him. He lives in Texas. Sweet, sweet man. But uh, he used to get it, look right in the camera and he'd talk about whatever his opponent was going to be and everything he was going to do to him. He said, now go tell somebody. And he would, he'd, he'd want them to come. He'd want everybody to come to the event to see him and see this great event. We, we get excited about, you know, Football and baseball and wrestling and all these other fun things. And by far, all those things are great. But friends, we're talking about eternal matters. Not gloom and doom. We're not talking about, you know, everything's terrible. No, no, no. Jesus can change your life. Amen? And we believe that. And if we believe that, let's go tell somebody. Amen? We talked about this message over the last several weeks as Jesus says, I am. The, 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 the totality of... Of those two words is amazing. And it really, really, it really comes to be in this one verse today. We've got a couple of more in this series. We're going to look at the vine, and then we're going to look at I am the Alpha and the Omega. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to wrap up with that. But, but, but in today, we look at I am the way, the truth, and the life. We see, we see, see, I'm already getting one clap over there. I love that. We, we, we clearly see the personal nature, the personal nature of every one of these I am statements. I am the bread. I'm the one that can supply everything you need. I am the door. I am the way that you get on and so on and on. So this message, each one is to the individual heart. It is a message of, of comfort. It, it is a message of assurance and clarity and promise. When we look at this today, when we see how this all pans out today, we, we, we look at this familiar passage and the power and the clear message that is contained in these 18 words is amazing. You know, it doesn't sometimes it only takes a few words to make a big point, right? A few words can change your life. I do. That'll change your life. I'm guilty. That'll change your life. I mean, all these different things. And here in these few 18 words, we see life-changing material. We're always in this life, we're always looking for answers, right? We're always looking for directions, we're always looking for examples to follow. And here we find it. In the very words of Jesus, it's all right here. As time in this particular as conversation that he's having with the disciples, the time for Jesus is drawing closer to the cross, we're, we're, we're inching further and further, closer and closer to that moment. Jesus knew. He knew how difficult that moment was going to be physically for him. It was going to be challenging emotionally for him. It would be, you know, the, the, the grief and the stress and on so would bring about the sweat droplets of blood and on so and on so. But he's also thinking here of those who would be left behind. He wanted them to have a clear grasp on what to do. He wanted them to have a clear answer on what to do to say, how to understand, how to be prepared. Isn't it good to know what to do, how to do it, how to get there, and on, so on, on. So we, we, all, we all want that. We all need that. So if we get back to understanding the statement, I am. What he is clearly saying without a doubt is that he is the answer to every issue that we have. 
He is the answer to every direction that we're looking for, to every example that we need, if we trust Him. If being the pivotal word. If, is, if, if changes the whole concept. Because if we don't trust Him, we can have all the advice in the world, it doesn't matter. If we don't trust Him, we have all the directions in the world, but if we're going to go the way that we want to, then those directions mean nothing. Isn't that true? You know, we have the, 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 the GPS gimmicks on our phone right now, and they're saying, turn here, turn there, but I want to go on this road. Reposition, redirect. I mean, it's constantly trying to get, it'll get you back on the pathway it wants you to go on, right? This is Jesus saying, I can show you where to go, but you'll only get there if you follow me. You'll only get there if you listen to me. So if we look back in this particular chapter 13, or 14, I'm sorry, I can't see without my reading glasses on. But when we, when, we look, when we look at what's being said here, and we start back at the very beginning, we look in verse 1. And Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. We begin with those few words that let not your heart be troubled. How often do we worry about stuff? Because some people say every day, <laughs> I mean, because that seems to be life, right? We have all these things come about and curveballs and, and blindsided and all this stuff. We worry about stuff a lot. So if we're honest, it's quite a bit. At times, in fact, we become consumed by it. We can't think. We can't process. We, 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 we feel like we can't breathe. And I'm talking to somebody today, whether you're here, whether you're listening, or you'll hear this later. Think about this. I, I, I just can't do it anymore. I just I can't make it anymore. I, I just don't feel like I can survive. I can't breathe. But God is saying, the Lord is saying, our Creator, our Savior is saying, why do you do that? I'm right here. I'm, I'm right here. I mean, it, 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 is the, it is the literal drowning person, and you've handed them the life raft. And you're still taking on water and trying to swallow the pool. And, and you're like, what, why? It's, the, it's right here. Just grab it, and you'll be okay. But we have to trust him for it to work. Well, I don't believe that life raft will hold me up. I think it's got a hole in it. Or we can find all the different things in the world. He says, if you believe in God, then believe in me. In other words, if you believe that I am from God, in fact, if you believe that I am God, then follow me is a safe place to travel. Follow me will get you where you are looking to go. We worry about the future. We worry about what it looks like. We worry about if we're going to have enough to make it. We're, we're going to, can, can we survive? But worry steals the joy of the journey. Doesn't it? Think about that. You know, if we, we're so consumed with how we're going, how everything's going to work out and, and all these other things, we don't enjoy the process of getting there. And then by the time we get there, it's not, it's like, oh, is that it? Or I'm too tired to enjoy it. Or I'm too old to enjoy it. Or, and on so and on so and on. So God is saying to us, let me walk with you. Je Jesus says here, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. In my Father's house are many mansions. He's saying to us today, there's plenty of room. You don't have to worry about that. Isn't it nice to not have to worry about stuff sometime when you know that it's taken care of? This is what he's saying. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. There's plenty of room. You don't have to worry about that. And if it were not so, I would have told you. But this goes back to, do you trust me? Because I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the door. I am the resurrection of life. So... If I'm all of those things, don't you think I can provide for you? Don't you think that if I'm telling you there's plenty of room, don't you think that if where I'm going, if I say I'm coming back to get you, that all that's true? Can't you hold on to that today? I go to prepare a place for you. This again is Jesus speaking to the individual heart. You are taken care of. Doesn't that feel good to know that? Doesn't that feel good to embrace that today? I realize that we live in a world of 
of struggle and strife, and, and sometimes we don't know what the right hand is doing, and, the, and, and we, we get all confused about this and that, but Jesus is saying, I'm going to take care of you if you trust me. Everything is going to be okay. But again, he's speaking to the individual heart. The, the personal nature of what Jesus offers us is truly amazing. I mean, again, I've said this many times, but to stop and think, God loves me. That really is mind-blowing, really. I mean, it, it, we, we, we wrap our minds around that, and we think about that the creator of all cares about me. He's developed something for me. He's going to prepare for me. It simply, it simply just doesn't get better than that. I mean, that, that's just incredible. Jesus says, I'm going to prepare this place, and then I'll be back. That is a promise he's going to keep. We can hold on to that today because of everything else that he said. We can absolutely, but yet we remain in worry so often and we remain in fear over what we don't know. The unknown strikes fear in everybody, doesn't it? I mean, because well, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm worried to death about that, but why? I mean, you can't see it, but is there any trust? Is there any faith in this? We, we have so much fear over that which we don't know. But, but listen to his words. He says that where I am, there you may be also. God wants to spend time with me. God wants to spend time with you. Think about that. Let that soak in for a minute. You know, the, the Lord is my shepherd. He wants to sit down by those still waters. He wants to walk with me through that green pasture. He wants to spend time with me. Jesus says, where I'm going, you may be also. He's speaking here to the disciples, but I, I believe that he's speaking to everyone who's listening right now. He's saying, where I go, you know, and the way you know. Well, Thomas, we're told, was the doubter. That's the old saying, doubting Thomas. We, hear, we even still hear that today. He said, well, hold on a minute, Lord. We don't know where you're going. And we don't know how to get there. We don't know the way. How could we possibly know the way? How could this be? How can we know the way? Jesus responded, and to all of those I believe that he's speaking to today that live with doubt and fear and worry and all the things. He responds and he says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Listen at what these words are saying. I, singular. There's nothing else. There's no, there's no additions. There's no one of many. There's no but. He says, it's me. I am. And then we see that word am. It's clear. It's concise. It's without a doubt. I am the. That means only. There's no exceptions. There's no additions. There's no multiple choice. The only way, the direction. Where I'm going, you know. How to get there, you know. We don't. Jesus says, it's me. It's me. Understand that today. I am the way. Now, what he did not say was, I will show you the way. No, he says, I am the way. He did not say, well, here is one of the ways. No, he said, I am the way. But this points back to his invitation. Follow me. Follow me. Because where is he going, right? Well, this takes us back to the earlier part of this chapter. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Wouldn't we want to go there? Wouldn't we want to be where someone is preparing something for us? We get invited to each other's homes because we're preparing a meal for you. Well, we want to know how to get there. What's your address? And plug it in the phone and off we go. Oh, we've become familiar with it and we know exactly where they live. Well, I know where that street's at. I'm on my way. Jesus says, follow me. Because I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. I am the way of how to get there. This, this is a promise fulfilled. Again, we see, we see the word the, the way. Again, this is, not a, this is not a direction. This is the direction. The direction. 
He's saying, if, if you want to get where I am, then you have to go as I say go. You have to go as I lead. A lot of people struggle today, and I just talked to someone not long ago that really, really struggles with the understanding of eternity, the understanding of death and resurrection and all those different things. But friends, better days are ahead if we believe in Jesus. Better days are ahead if we've surrendered our hearts and lives to Him. Many people struggle with the idea of better days because nothing on this earth points us in that direction. How many people do we hear to say today, oh, everything's getting worse, everything's bad, everything's upside down, and, and, and this is corrupt, and this is bad, and this is... None of that sounds very inspiring. None of that sounds very encouraging. None of that seems like anything that we'd really want to look forward to. But Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. There's a beauty in the way that that is said. This is because Jesus is the way. That's why we can't seem to find answers anywhere else. That's why everything else seems to be a dead-end street. Well, that didn't work. Well, let's try this. Well, that didn't work either. Well, let's try that. Well, wait a minute. We, we continue to get on that cycle, on that spin, and it never fix. It never goes. It never gets better. That's because Jesus is the way, the way. We, we witness so much dishonesty today. How many of us believe that? We see it all the time. Where there's not truth in advertising, whether it's this, you know, was said, but that's not what was done, on so and on so. And after a while, it, it leaves everybody wondering about everything. Is it real? Did that really happen? Is it is it serious? Thomas said, How can we know? How how can we know? Jesus said, I'm the truth. I am the truth. In other words, I am the single source, am, it does exist, it is real, it is literal, the, the only one, truth, all you need to know. All you need to know to get where you desire. Think about that. We don't have to go and Google it. We don't have to look up something, some other artificial means of, 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 of answer. He says, I'm the truth. I'm the way, I'm how you get there, and I'm telling you the truth about everything that you need to know. But it all goes back to, do you trust Him? Because this requires trust, which requires relationship. Because if we don't know Him, we don't trust Him. If he's merely a religious figure, if he's merely a Bible character, if he's merely just, well, something I've heard, it has no depth we have that way of relationships. How many people do we know today? Hundreds. Maybe in some cases, thousands. How many of them do we really know? That circle gets pretty small when we begin to understand the difference in acknowledgement and acquaintance versus someone you really, really know. I mean, I've got a, a thousand, eleven hundred or whatever friends on Facebook. I probably don't know 40 of them. You know, just somehow they get connected and you just, I don't know, whatever. They send you the thing and you say, yeah, later on you go back and delete that because you find out there's some kind of junk involved. But, but neither here nor there. Jesus is saying, I am the way. I'm how you get where you need to go. I'm the truth. I'm, I'm telling you, but you've got to trust me. Je Jesus is, is the way to heaven. You know, we, 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 we hear about that a lot. We, but Jesus says, I am the truth about heaven. I'm going to prepare that for you. Many speculate, what is that like? What, 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 what is heaven like? Many, many write books. Many have become experts. But Jesus says, I am the truth. I am. And I've said this before not long ago, so just repeating myself. But someone asked me if I was going to give all my expert advice on heaven and everything that was going to be like. I said, no, because I don't have any. I can just tell you how to get there. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to proclaim that knowledge. I don't have it. God didn't give me that. But Jesus said, "I am. I'm the truth about that. You want to know? Ask me." Isn't it much better sometimes when you deal with the person that actually knows? You know, you go into a place of business and you need to know where something's at. 
You know, you, you need to know where a light switch is at. You don't ask the guy over in the plumbing department. You want to talk to the guy that works in the electrical department. He knows what he knows where it's at. Jesus saying, you want to know the truth? Ask me because I am the truth. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. This speaks to the individual heart. Again, heaven is a prepared place. Think about that. Heaven is a prepared place. It's real. It's a prepared place. And it is made by the hands of God. And it will be ready when our time is ready. Think about that. He's working on it for me right now. Because he's still working on you if you're still here. You know? We're not done. We still got something else to do. And he said, when your time's done, I'll be ready. He's never late. We talked about that last week. Even if it's four days, he's still on time. It, yeah, we, we understand it. It, it will be ready when our time to arrive gets here. It will be a place to where we will see Jesus. How can I say that with authority? Because he says, where I am, you shall be also. Where I am, you will be with me. I mean, how, how much more clear could we get? So do you want to go? Do, do, do you want to go? Do you want to be to where he says? Jesus said, I am the way. I'm how you get there. I am the truth about everything. And we can trust him as we follow him alone. As we follow him and him alone. Because he leads us home. He's how we get where we want to be. You know, we, we see a thousand different ways to do this or that today. We, we hear, you know, all this and all that. We got 31 flavors and 89 colors and, 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 and all the. Sometimes that's fine if you're looking for ice cream or a new car. But when it comes to eternity, friends, there's only one choice. And that's Jesus. You tell him no. Then much like he told the guy at the healing pool, there's something far worse if you don't follow me. That's not a threat. That's not him being mean. He's being honest because he is the truth. He's saying, here's the direction, but I'm not going to make you go. But just know that if you choose this path, it's like a warning label on a product. If, if you use this product, you may get cancer. You may die. You may get this or do that or whatever the case. That label is there so you have a choice. Well, I don't care what that label says. I'm going to do it anyhow. Light it up. Pour it down. Whatever the case. Okay. But you, you were told. So the results of that are not a surprise. The results of one standing before Jesus one day, well, I didn't know. Yes, you did. You chose to say no. You chose to say, no, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to go down my pathway. I'm going to go do it because I want to live this way. I want this. I want that. Okay, God loves you enough to let you do that. He gives you that freedom. But he also loves you enough to tell you the truth. If you say no, here's the alternative. That's not mean. That's not judgmental. That's not an uncaring, unloving God. No, that's saying there's consequence for what you do. It's just like when we were growing up. If, if your mom told you no, it usually it, back in those days, it meant what? No. And if you chose to do it anyhow, then there were consequences for that, whatever it may have been. You know, back in our day, it was a belt or a fly swat or a frying pan or whatever came about. But, but, but you know, now it's time out. But, but anyhow, that's a different story. But, but here we're seeing Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. I, I am the way. There's no other. I am the truth. There is no other. And then he says, I am the life. I am the life. I, I am the example of what this journey looks like. What, was the life of Jesus easy? No. He, he was rejected and mocked and ridiculed and, and cast out and, and called names. I mean, pe people called him the devil. You know, he was, you know, oh, he's got a demon and he's crazy. And he's, I mean, he, he was accused of things he didn't do. He was crucified because of a false trial with people that were paid to lie. He endured all of that for us. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And he says, 
follow me. Follow me. We, we understand he was about his father's work. He would say that at 12 years old, coming from the temple, as Mary was looking for him frantically, he said, don't you know? i got to be about my, my, my father's work. That did not always please others. we got to understand that, friends. We, we don't live in the kingdom of heaven today. We, we, we live on the earthly realm where spirits and principalities and rulers of the air are kind of creating a lot of chaos and a lot of havoc, right? And so when we do the things of God, guess what? They don't like that. They don't want to see people set free. They don't, they don't want to see people get saved. They don't want to see life change. Jesus says, if you follow me, you will be hated. Hated. Nobody wants to be hated. Nobody wants to be disliked. Everybody wants to be popular, right? We all want to get thumbs up. We all want to get pats on the back. All... But Jesus said, I must be, I must be about my father's work. I must be about what it is that he has called me to do. And pleasing others may not always be the case. Jesus said, if we followed him, we would be hated, but we must not forget that in the context of what he said on that, he said, but remember, they hated me first. You're not alone. You're not in bad company. You are following the way. You are hearing the truth. You are understanding the life. And he says, they hated me first. He came to his own and they said, no. He was rejected. He was ignored. He was mocked. He was ridiculed. He was killed when all that he desired to do was show someone the way. Show someone the truth. Give them the example of what life should be. But self and pride, and I want it my way, it took over. Is that still alive today? On every corner that you can possibly imagine. Evil in desires. Evil in the lust for flesh, the lust for power. It blinds those from seeing the way. It blinds those from hearing the truth or understanding the life. Many have been affected by this and are convinced that there's another way. Jesus said many would come and give you false things. Many would come and even claim to be me. I mean, there, there's a story about that right now. There's some guy running around somewhere overseas claiming to be Jesus. You know, he said many will come in my name. Many will tell you different things. Paul would say they would tickle the ears. I'll tell you what you want to hear. This is, again, this is not about pointing fingers of criticism toward any one thing, but Jesus said many will be convinced that there's another way. Many will be convinced that there's another truth. We can make up our own truth. In fact, some of the highly educated experts today said there is no such thing as truth. It's what you want it to be. But that's a lie all by itself, Right? You know, that's like trying to tell you and convince you that water's not wet. That's not true. It'll never be true. But that's the world that we live in today. The opposite of everything that is realistic. Just like life. We can just be whatever we want. We can create whatever we want. We can have another style of life to be forged. We can refute, we can reject, and we can spit in the face of Jesus. But no one considers the cost of that. No one looks at what that big picture is and what that looks like down the way. Others have tried to develop ways. Others have, have created new truths and sold the idea that other ways of living, while they may be celebrated, here's one gigantic missing component in all of that. We can tell you there's another way. We can tell you there's any truth that you want it to be. We can tell you that life can be whatever you want it to be. Dress it up however you want. But here's where Jesus brings all that to home. Here's where Jesus says, okay, I am those things that you're seeking. But understand, if you create new, you create different, you create alternatives, here's the answer. No one. No one comes into the Father but by me. That's the answer. That is the harsh understanding. Friends, all is lost without Jesus. Can we believe that this morning? 
We can find any kind of way we want to go. We can go any way we want to go. We can tell ourselves any truth that we want. And we can create any kind of life that we want. Good, bad, or indifferent. All is lost without Jesus. Do as you want. Go as you want. Believe what you want. But it puts you on the pathway to an awful ending. And I don't say that to be critical or mean. I'm telling you the truth. Because Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. The way, our directions, the truth, our clarity, the life, our example. Jesus says, I am those things. They can only be found in me. We can search the world over. And we can never find those things without a lot of strings attached. We can try to find those answers anywhere else, but there's always the small print. There's always the but. There's always those things. A way and the way lead to two different places. A truth and the truth has eternal complications and implications. The end is not the time to determine this. See, many people say, well, I'm just going to do whatever I want, and then I'll figure it out at the end. But you may not get the end. Again, I, I spoke on this this morning in our class, but, and it's not to, to, to make light by any means or, or to use the tragedy. But the folks that died on that underwater thing this past week eviscerated, just, just, just gone in an instant, in a flash. There was no time to make that decision. It either had to already had been made or it wasn't made. And that is not to cast judgment on any of these people because I don't know them. Maybe they knew Jesus. I don't know. But we all know that life is but what? A vapor. You know, in my former, in my former life, when we was on the road, death was real. We saw it every day. Many people weren't prepared for that. I've stood over this very place and had caskets before me or urns before me hundreds and hundreds of times over the years. Many of them were ready. Many were not. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the life. I am the truth. I'm the things that you need. The end is not the time to determine things. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place and I'll be back that you may be there with me. That word may is an important word. Because May gives you a choice. May says, you can come. Or you don't have to. That's up to you. You may be there. The truth, it matters. It matters. We, we've lost that in our world today. Because we don't want to offend anybody. We don't hurt anybody's feelings. And I'm not about that either. I don't, I don't want to ever tr just intentionally hurt someone. You know, there's, there's kind ways to say things that aren't nice, but to leave it out. And I think, I think I've shared this, but I, I even heard a pastor say this one time. And I said, how do you teach certain things to the, to the group of people you're trying to reach? He said, we just leave that part out. But we can't leave that out. See, we've lost the concept of truth in our world. And sadly, the church is not exempt. You know, we, we, we've, we've started traveling down that road in, in, the, in the light of you know, inclusion and this and that and all these other things. And, okay, and, and, and I, want, I want to make it absolutely known. There's not a person alive that can't walk through that door that won't be welcomed. I believe that. No matter where you're living, how you're living, or any other kind of way, you'll be welcomed. But you're going to hear about Jesus. We're not going to change the story to fit your narrative. Because Jesus is the truth, the singular. There is no other. That's how that has to work because that's how, that's how lives are changed. When we see there is no alternatives, there is, no, there is no but, there is no this, there is no, 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 it's one way. That's it. And, and, and to me, that is not mean-spirited and judgmental on God's part. No, that's simple. It's either yes or no. And you don't have to, you, you don't have to sit there and ponder over, well, I don't know. A and B look pretty good, but man, I don't know. That, that all of the above, that covers it. it. No, we don't have to do that. It's yes or no. It's very, very clear when we understand that the truth matters. We have to remain lockstep with Jesus. I believe that. Because He is the way. He is the truth. And He gives us the example of what life can be. Friends, it is only Jesus.
It's just, it's just not difficult. It's not diff- it's not, you know, we, we, we make it that way because we try to be comparative with the way things are in the world and what Scripture says and what Jesus says. But those two don't combine. Those two aren't, aren't mirror images. They aren't reflective of each other. And Jesus says, I am the truth. The world says, I will give you a truth. There's two different things. Jesus says, I am the way. The world says, we'll show you many ways. But that's not how we get to where he's preparing for us. We need to understand that today. There is no gray area when it comes to things of God. Celebrities can influence with their world, with their words, with the latest fads, the latest dress styles, haircuts, language, whatever the case. We see kids emulate that all the time, even some adults. Well, Oprah said it. Or whoever, I don't even know if Oprah's relevant anymore, but that just that just comes to my mind. You know, or who Dr. Phil said it, you know? All the pastors can influence with their ideas. Pastors can influence with guilt and promises and maybes, but only Jesus can get us to where we desire to be. That's what we need to understand today, friends, is Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And no one. We want to talk about today, you know, equality and, and, and nobody being left out. Well, that's pretty clear. No one gets in except through me. That, that really doesn't leave any room for argument, right? I mean, that, that's a very, very clear. This is absolute. There are no exceptions. There's no, well, I'll make things work out for you. Just because, I mean, you know, you knew Bill and, you know, Bill's a great guy. and No. No, no one comes into the Father but by me. No one means that, period. No exemption. Doesn't matter the status, doesn't matter the title, known or unknown, rich, poor, famous, king, queen, mayor. None of these matter because none of those move the needle. Jesus is the way, period. We need to understand the clarity of this one scripture. No means no. No one comes into the Father. This door has one key. One. And His name is Jesus. The quicker that we understand that, again, when we embrace this, it just just clears the air. All the fog is out of the way. There's There's no confusion. There's no, okay, I get it. I either go that way or I don't. And if I don't, I understand there's consequences with that. So that's not about somebody being mean to me. That's not about being unfair to me. I was told, you know, like those big, uh, we we were out with the kids yesterday and and animals and whatever the case. And there's signs in front of several of these things says, we bite. What does that mean? You put your finger in there, you might not bring it back. You know, that's how that works. Jesus says, no one. No one gets in unless you know me. That's pretty clear. The way, the truth, that's one. The life, one. He he gave us these clear instructions, friends, to follow his example, which will not only get us home, but it will allow us to see many more come with us. You know, you heard me say this not long ago. What the only thing better than going to heaven is taking somebody with you. And this is what Jesus is saying. When we're expressing our hearts, when we're sharing the gospel with someone, no, we may not be doing it like this. We may not be on a platform like this with a Bible and and some notes and, 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 and preaching. But friends, that's not what he's talking about. He's saying, just be honest. If someone says, how can I be where you're going? Just tell them Jesus. He's the answer. He's the way, the truth, and the life. There's no question about that. I am. I I just love the clarity of those two words. I am. It goes all the way back to 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 the times of Moses when he was asking God for a name. He said, I am. When we understand that, and even now on into the words of Christ, he's saying, I am whatever you need because I am the truth. I am the way, I'm the, I'm the life, I am everything you're looking for. These two words, it removes confusion about what to do, where to go, or how to get there. Can we believe that this morning? 
Lord willing, 